Hello, this is John from k4programming.com and this is a tutorial on for loops, continuing my course on JavaScript and Node.js for beginners. So a for loop is probably the most common type of loop used in programming in general. Many of the constructs that we've seen and generally most or all of the ideas that we've seen really are found in a variety of programming languages with small differences between them. And uh, a for loop is one of those things that's ubiquitous in a wide range of programming languages. And a for loop takes all the elements that you need to create a loop and basically puts them into a single construct. So if we think how we, would, how we might write a while loop, so there are lots of ways to write while loops, but one common way would be to create a counter, set it equal to zero and say while counter is less than five or whatever, and within the loop you have to increment counter. And we've seen this already, so if I do console.log and just output counter there, then let's run this. So um, if I write node and four.js, then we get output zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's just bring this up a little bit. Okay. So if you look at look at what elements are here, now they, they don't all have to be present. None of them have to be present actually to create a while loop. If you if you were to write while like while true, that would be an infinite loop, and then you could have some way of breaking it inside the loop. So one way is to use the um, break keyword. I could write. Uh, let's maybe take a quick look at that. So I could write while true and I'll still increment the counter, but here I'll say um, if counter is greater than or equal to five, break. So the break keyword breaks a loop. Let's just take a look. Let's just run this. And we get zero, one, two, three, four. So five iterations in total. Worth worth trying that out for yourself. And the point here that I'm making is that um, none of these loop elements are essential. Nevertheless, the most common way to write a while loop might be something similar to this. And you, you don't even have to say while counter is less than five. You could say, um, you know, set the counter to ten and say while well, counter is greater than zero, and then decrement the counter with minus minus here. So there are lots of possibilities, but the important point is that there are three distinct parts to this, three distinct working parts. We've got a, a variable that we've created, which we've initialized in this case to zero. We've got a condition somewhere, typically here, that determines when the loop stops. And we also increment the counter or we could decrement it depending on exactly how we're doing this loop. Now, a for loop brings all those three different parts together and it looks like this. So an infinite for loop would look like this. So we write for, and again, we have round brackets and we have curly brackets. So this is the same as a while loop, except we've got the for keyword. And within these two brackets, we need two semicolons like this, which looks weird, but you'll see why shortly. If I just write console.log in there, let's output hello. This is an infinite loop. So if I run this, it just goes on forever till I do control C and stop it. Um, but these three, uh, these two semicolons divide this area up into three sections, which we can, where we can put the three elements that we need of our loop. So the first thing that we need is a loop counter. And by the way, it's, it's really common to use um, really short variable names for loop counters, uh, especially in this situation. And it's, it's actually particularly common to use I, um, or if you've got another one, you need another one, maybe J, maybe K. Uh, so in general, we avoid short cryptic variable names, but when you use I in a loop, everyone understands what it means. So I'm going to write let i equals naught here. Now this first section here will actually run before the loop starts. 
So that gives us an opportunity to create, to declare and initialize a variable. This second section here, um, that's where we put the loop condition. So this will be checked every time one iteration of the loop executes. And as soon as the condition is no, no longer true, the loop stops. So let's write i less than less than five. And then this third section here, this is going to get run every time the loop iterates. So um, after every iteration, this section will get run. Let's put I++. plus plus. So if you think how this is going to work now, before the loop starts, we declare this variable I and we initialize it to zero. And every time the loop goes round, we are going to um, increment this variable I, increase the value of it by one. And then we're going to check, we're going to see is it still less than five? If it is, do another iteration of the loop. If it isn't, stop the loop. So let's actually output the value of i here as well and run this. I'll just zoom out. And we can see we've got hello, zero, one, two, three, and four. So f five iterations of the loop because we keep going as long as i is less than five and we're starting i at zero, so zero, one, two, three, four. I, if you're if you're new to this, the thing is just to practice this. Uh, copy it from the video here, and or from my uh, GitHub repository, where you can find that at GitHub.com/slash/caveofprogramming, and then just go to the repository for Node.js uh, and JavaScript. And a, a really good thing to do is just to try it a few times, and then try to write it without referring to um, any code. So don't see if you can write it from memory, in other words, and then practice. Just make sure that you can write a for loop that executes any particular number of times that you want, like three times, two times, 10 times, whatever. So try it out. And once you can do that, you basically got the hang of it. Uh, so it looks a little bit complicated at first to a complete beginner. But, you know, it's just a little bit of stuff to remember. There's, there's, it's not absolutely not obligatory to put these things in these different sections here. The point of them is just that you have a section that runs before the loop starts. You have a condition that's checked before every iteration of the loop. And you have a thing that runs um, before every iteration of the loop, except for the first one. Well, actually, I suppose it's better to say this runs after every iteration of the loop. And this condition is checked before the loop executes. Uh, so you can put what you, what you like in these three sections, and sometimes programmers get a bit creative with them, but that can get very unclear. So that the clearest thing to do is to do stuff like this, and if you've got other code, put it somewhere else. But nevertheless, um, it isn't uncommon to see other stuff in here as well. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.